real crisis that confronts us is the retirement income deficit confronting us as Americans. As you folks know very well, that's the difference between what people need to have when they retire, what they should have, and what they really do have at this point. Uh, the retirement income deficit is a staggering $6.6 .6 trillion in growing. The sad truth is that most people just aren't prepared financially for retirement. And what happens to people who run out of money when they get old? You know, they see their living standard decline. They lean more and more on the social safety net, squeezing government at all levels. Or they turn to their kids. I want to be very clear. Cutting Social Security, cutting Medicare, and cutting Medicaid does not solve this pending crisis. I started looking into this a few years ago, it quickly became clear that, that this is one of the most underreported crises in America. No one's talking about it, it's not in the presidential campaigns, it's just not out there. But what wasn't clear was what caused it and how we can solve it. So to get answers, uh, a few years ago I started chairing some hearings on my committee uh, to look at this. And what we found was that this retirement crisis comes from the weakening of the three-legged stool. You know, we always said, and you probably heard your parents, parents my parents, talk about this three-legged stool. Uh, and that was Social Security, a savings, and a pension. Uh, not any one of which could carry you through, but all three together would be something to get you through to the day you died, which hopefully was before you got too old, Josh, as uh, Will I Am was saying. Uh, Social Security, of course, is still strong. Benefits are modif mo uh, modest, uh, I'll say a little bit more about that later on in my remarks, but it needs to be supplemented by other sources of income. Now, on savings today, half of, the Amer half of Americans have less than $10,000 of savings. Think about that, 50% of Americans have less than $10,000 of savings. And to make matters worse, we have seen a steady decline in the pension system in the private sector over the last 30 years. It used to be if you had a steady job, you probably had a defined benefit pension. Having that pension meant you'd go to bed at night, sleep easy, because you knew that when you retired, you would have a predictable, guaranteed source of income for as long as you lived. And now, traditional defined benefit pensions are rapidly becoming an endangered species in our country. The number of employers offering them has fallen drastically. Over the past three decades, fewer than one in five workers today have a pension. And I said, you know, when I first came to Congress, one out of every two Americans had a pension, a defined benefit pension, something that they would get till the day they died. One out of every two. Today it's one out of every five and getting more. Now, again, I keep saying, you know, I keep saying, people say, well, I got a 401k. I said, that's not a retirement plan. That's a savings plan. Fine, I like it. My 401k is fine. But they're not going to last you till the day you die. Not a pension. It's just it's 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 a savings plan. And let's be honest about it. Four hundred one k's are pretty darn complicated. You know, most people I've talked to, most people don't really have much investment savvy. I do. I have perfected the art of buying high and selling low. <laughs> well, pensions I think are one of the best ways to ensure that the middle class can have a secure retirement and a guaranteed source of income that they can count on. Now, there are certainly things we can improve, but there's no reason to abandon a kind of retirement system that has helped millions of Americans, middle class, middle income workers. So we need to make it stronger and more secure, but we can't just focus on protecting what we have because every year, as more and more of these pensions disappear, it's getting harder and harder to keep what we have. Again, that's why I said we need to broaden the conversation, make it about lifting everyone up, ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to earn a safe and secure retirement. And that message needs to come from us, the people who understand what a pension means to a middle class family. We need to make our voices heard, push for real change. I think it's time to go on the offense. I know that you all understand that and have been working on solutions to the retirement crisis. I think the work that Hank and others have done on the Secure Choice Pension Plan is just phenomenal. And you've already had some success. 
despite all the roadblocks thrown up by those scared of change, secure a choice, secured the first hurdle in the California legislature this last year. So I congratulate you on that. We, we all have to come together around a kind of a practical solution, like what you have come up with, or the California system, what I'm talking about, they all basically <coughs> elementally are the same. And we have to be relentless in our advocacy. There's going to be opposition to the things we want to accomplish. But on that score, again, I deeply appreciate all the excellent work that the National Conference on Public Employees Retirement System are doing, what you have been doing. Uh, again, this is something that uh, we can't just kick this can down the road anymore. Uh, I'm committed to using whatever I position I have and power I have over the next couple of years uh, in the Senate, working with some people in the House of Representatives to accomplish this. I believe we can do it. We've been talking about it. It's been rolling around now with what California has done, what you have done with your program here. Now, I really do believe the time is right uh, for us to put a new system in place along these lines.